Now riddle me this. What exactly is the best pickup that money can buy from the late 1980s to the early 1990s? Today we're going to be figuring that out as we're going to be showcasing and putting to the test these three American icons by not towing only 25,000 but over 45,000 pounds in my Missouri special of the Iron Gauntlet. Well, top of the morning to you, ladies. My name's E. Randall Man Buck. Welcome back to Farming Sim 22 here on a very special episode of my Missouri Special inspired Iron Gauntlet. You guys know TFL trucks. They usually do the thing called the Ike Gauntlet in the great state of Colorado. Well, we're going to kind of do something referring to that with three American giants. Now, whether you like Dodge, Chevy, or Ford, None of that matters, as today we're going to put this to the test to see which of these three giants can withstand the Missouri Iron Gauntlet. So we're going to start by getting into the vehicles that are going to be in today's challenge. Now our first competitor is the 1986 Chevrolet K30 Scottsdale with the 6.2 liter Detroit diesel mounted to a 4-speed manual transmission. This truck is running 265-70 R16 Continental tires. By far one of the toughest trucks we have on the plot today. 410 rear gearing and with that diesel it's going to have torque out the rear so definitely a tough one for the competition. Now next up we have our 1991 Dodge W350. This is pretty much your regular Dodge Ram with its 12 valve 5.9 liter Cummins strapped to a 5 speed manual transmission. It is also running the same Continental 265 all seasons. This is by far one of the most noticeable trucks of its era with its diesel Cummins. The only thing that's going to suck about this is that it's the only truck that does not have a dual fuel tank system on it. And last but certainly not least, pulling up the rear is the 1990 F350 XLT Lariat from Ford. This is having the Goliath of the 7.3 liter IDI diesel with a dual tank configuration and a 5-speed manual transmission. This thing is an absolute brute, I tell you folks. The only thing that's going to really affect this truck is that when we bought it, we did not have towing gears in this as both other trucks are running 410 rear axles and this is running a 355. Will the LIDI be able to help out? We don't know, but we're going to figure that out in this test today. But with the introduction out of the way, let's get on to our trailers in the back as to what we are going to be hauling. Now using a fifth wheel mounted plate in the back of the bed, we have a 47 foot Kaufman tri-axle car hauler trailer with four classic vehicles grossing to over 25,000 pounds. Our other competition here is the 36-foot Mid-Soda with 22 round bales quibbling up to 46,000 pounds. This is going to come uh, very much in handy during our brake test to test how well the brakes and the engine brake systems work because of the fact these are manuals. So let's, without further ado, get right into our test. Our path to follow here, what we're going to do is we're going to take one really long straight up to our intersection in the top left hand corner of the map. This is our straightaway that we're going to really be able to test acceleration of the vehicle. But as we take a right, we're going to be following down the main road, which is going to be important on our way back. We're going to stop, turn in on this little farm, go to the roundabout, and on our way back, this is where we're really going to have to test the vehicle's transmission. As when we head back left, right in the middle of this road is a massive uphill. So we're really going to have to test how well these vehicles can pull this weight up the hill. After that, we're going to just take ourselves back to where we placed right in the middle of downtown and that will complete our first challenge now for our second challenge we're just going to be hooking up to the car trailer and we are going to do one big loop around the entire point of this map now to make this as simple as possible this is a five category shootout being scored on a scale of one to four except for time trials which is three two one my last race though however is double the points at six four and two the categories that are going to be judged on is time stability fuel squat 
and brake power. So it's going to be essential for these vehicles to perform at their utmost potential. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. Now I know this says Ram 73 IDI, but that's just a mod error in the text. It should be a Ford, but it's going off by brand. That's why it says Ram, because it's defaulting. So don't worry about that. It actually is a Ford. In the coding, it says Ford. But that's just all we have to do. So our first contestant coming up, I'm really interested, I really want to do, is the Scottsdale Chevy. So we're going to pop into our Chevy here, and our first test, like I was saying, is going to be towing the bales. Now, like I said, this is definitely exceeding the towing capacities of these vehicles by every means necessary. But our first test, like I said, is going to be the squat rate of the vehicle. So here is our stock height once we hook it up to the, wait, before we hook it up to the truck. And the Chevy goes about halfway down between the wheels and where it sat originally. The jacks might have to drag on the ground only when the trailer is sitting uh, sideways. So let's work our way out onto the track. Now, sadly, with the version of this truck that we ended up buying and for all of ours, what it actually makes it even more fair is that we do not have towing mirrors on this truck. But let me get my stopwatch out here. And we're going to get ready to start our race. Going up the iron gauntlet, not Ike, iron in three, two, one. Both trucks, so all three trucks have been filled up full on their fuel capacity, so we do not have to worry about anything on that. Now these Chevys were known to have our, what we like to call the granddaddy low with a three speed. It was technically just a four speed. They just labeled one as low and then one and two is one, three is two, and then four is three. As it was just a way to look like it was actually a three speed, but in reality, it was just a four speed. So far, I'm really liking this truck's pulling power, but a lot of that's also probably going to be coming from the fact it has a 410 rear axle. Like I mentioned earlier, that Ford only has a 355. It's a highway geared truck. This one's gonna have a lot more torque to it, especially being a diesel, only revving up to about 2000 RPMs. Check the engine braking on the truck. The brakes are not great on this truck. I really don't like that, but what do you expect when you're towing 46,000 pounds with a truck that has no means doing that? Here comes our long straightaway that we're going to have to use our brakes going back down as the farm's going to come up on the corner real fast. This is a slight grade going uphill. But I'm really liking the power level in this. We're in the we're in max gear right now at 50 miles an hour and we're still climbing. So there is a lot of uh, low end power on this motor that I didn't think it would actually have compared to uh, the competition. We'll have to see how well this one performs out against the 5.9, which is the only other truck that has 410 rear gearing. But I think we're going to leave there at about 65 because stability wise, the truck, it's not doing a whole lot. Like if I were to sway my wheel, we get a little bit of play. The truck rocks, but it still compensates back to center. The trailer is not swaying at all. I love that. And here comes our uphill section coming back. It doesn't look like much, but trust me, it's going to definitely show how much power these vehicles actually have. So take a nice even right, keep our trailer on the gra uh, keep our trailer on the uh, gravel. About said asphalt twice, but this is not asphalt. Actually, it might be. Here is our delivery, and we are 2 minutes and 36 seconds in. I'd say so far that's a pretty good goal. So now that we're rolling back out of the farm, let's head on our way back and see how fast we can do this going back. Make sure there is no traffic coming. There's enough that we can get by. And here, like I was saying, it's going to be a bit more of an uphill battle. So let's just see how well this truck can power through. Now, if you guys have not already, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. As you do know, we are on the race to the 100,000 public subscribers by the end of this year. Any help is appreciated, and I'm so glad your eyes are able to here to join us on this very special challenge. So, going up the hill now, we are still holding at about 58 miles an hour, and I am pedal to the metal. So, this truck does have enough power underneath of it with enough gearing that we are able to pull more speed 
even in max gear and full throttle. I love that. I really didn't want to have to downshift at all to try and regain power, so we are able to use full range of gears in order to still be pulling speed. Let's finish off by rolling back into our spot with the trucks, and we'll get its final time. And stopwatch says... Five minutes and 16 seconds. I would say that's an absolutely fantastic time, at least for a benchmark where we're going. Stability-wise, like I was saying, I really did like how this truck actually stayed stable. Uh, even though I hit a few bumps, I didn't really feel anything on the truck as the trailer didn't uh, overcorrect. Nothing really felt like I was in danger or out of control of the trailer, so the squat is going to give it a bit of a dock on its score, but I will say that that was by far one of the smoothest rides I've had with pulling a trailer that's that full on weight. So let's get the Chevy out of here. Let's pop over to the Ram. This is actually now gaining us an extra gear because we have a five-speed manual coming out of this Cummins. One thing that I do know about this transmission is that it is a lot longer gears. It might be a 410 rear axle, but the actual transmission gearing itself is a lot longer of gears. I am worried about that, but this is also one of the lighter trucks that we have. So hopefully the suspension is not going to be a problem. Let's get a better view of our squat rating. I would say that did better than the Chevy by far. The only thing I'm not a huge fan of is the fact that our uh, trailer is still actually sitting lower. So those jacks are really going to become a problem if we end up hitting any low spots. But I have faith in this Dodge that it's going to be able to pull off the challenge. So let's reset the clock. The time to beat is 5 minutes and 16 seconds. So let's get a roll on. Clock has started get out let's see what this old Dodge has got it's the smallest engine we have here so will displacement come into come into effect going downhill exiting town I can definitely feel the weight tugging behind me but in second gear we're powering through going up the hill and by the looks of it we are going to be gaining speed yes but I can definitely feel how much weight is sitting on the back half of this truck. Coming up to our turn here though, let's test the brakes because the brakes on the Chevy were not in my favor. Oh, that is by far better. This is definitely gonna get a lot higher of a score on the brakes. Didn't really have to use them as much. Throw it down into first here. And I have a very bad feeling this truck's not gonna score very good coming back up the hill because of the fact it doesn't have nearly as much torque as I thought it would. The one thing that I did notice is that that is also our small incline. We're going to really have to try and gain some momentum coming back because of the fact that was our that was our small hill and we were just barely accelerating in third gear up to 60. So I have a very bad feeling that this truck is a little bit underpowered compared to any of the rest. But coming up to our turnaround point here, we got to said the brakes on this truck by far are a lot better than the Chevy's, so I'd hope it was to be expected because this is a five-year difference. This is a newer truck compared to that Chevy, this being a 91 and the Chevy being the 86. We have delivered our bales, and we are currently sitting at three minutes and five seconds, so... I don't think we're going to... I think we're going to be probably about a minute behind the Chevy at this rate, so let's just kind of... Put the pedal to the metal and the thingy to the floor, and let's see if we can't do at least a little bit closer than a minute. Getting back onto our straightaway here, we're going to try and gain as much speed as we can. I'm probably just going to have to try and leave this truck in second because the amount of uh, momentum that we're going to have carrying up this hill, I just have a very bad feeling that we're not going to be able to carry that into third gear and have any sort of gaining in speed, so might as well just try and maintain yeah, this thing, it's struggling. It is on the struggle bus. Now, if you guys haven't already noticed, we are on the Brandy Giants Mod Hub map of Alma, Missouri. 
This is actually a very beautiful map, and if you guys do actually like this Iron Gauntlet style of video, where, again, I'm not naming it the exact same as TFL Truck, but it just kind of makes sense because right now we're doing this with old American trucks, but the Alma, Missouri map kind of makes perfect sense for this challenge because there's enough terrain differences in the actual map itself that I can kind of pull this challenge off without actually having to worry about it too much. But let's finish off our time, and we're going to see what we got for a result. And we'll go from there. Finishing time of 6 minutes, 57 seconds. And just so you guys are aware, I was at full throttle the whole time we did this challenge. So, I'm not cheating. I'm not trying to make anyone else look good. You guys know I'm a Ford guy. And so far, Chevy has blown everyone else out of the water. That is a very good result. And like I said, we are towing almost double, if not possibly getting close to triple the amount of weight this truck is rated to tow. So hopefully the Ram can make back up on our next towing challenge, which is the speed challenge of the car trailers. But until then, let's swap over to the Ford. This truck has by far some of the best sounds in the game. That's for certain. And this truck also, once again, has a five-speed manual, just like the Dodge. But to my knowledge, how this truck has been geared is the first gear is going to be a little bit of a bog, but second gear is going to pull relatively hard because of the fact it's not much off of a ratio in the Dodge. So now let's check our squat rating. Eesh. It's not bad, but it's the best the trailer has sat on the vehicle compared to the factory height. That also has to do with the fact that the gooseneck sits higher up in this truck, so it does have an advantage on that. But that doesn't matter until we see the results of the towing, so let's get our stopwatch set. We'll get on the road. Let's start the challenge in three, two, one, let's go. So already off the bat, I can tell there is a power difference between the 7.3 and the Ram. Already coming out of town, we're already at 42 miles an hour. I'd say this is pulling relatively well. I don't know. Like I said, this does have a lot lower of gearing in the rear. So this is meant for highway gears, but I think the 7.3 is overpowering that. Oh, okay. I can definitely tell the difference in the truck's stability, though. This is not as stable as I'd like it to be. Brakes. Brakes do really well on this truck as well. I'm not even really tapping. I'm just downshifting to help it. So, yeah, first gear on this truck really does not like to bite. Second gear is not very long. But third gear, we really gained some traction on third gear. And finally shifting into fifth gear here. We're already up to about 55 miles an hour. So the Chevy still has the top end speed by the looks of it. But we'll find out more when we do the next challenge, which is dedicated to speed. I do not like how this truck is stable. I mean, the trailer itself feels fine, but the truck is just loose. I mean, I can barely swing the wheel and it just feels like I'm all over the road. I don't know if that's just a suspension being worn out on this truck or we have some real problems going on with this. Oh, okay, we are at 75 miles an hour. Slow that down. This might have a chance to beat that Chevy if we move, but again, the stability on this truck is just... I just really don't like it, but I do like how I can stay in second and keep going. There's no, like, I have to back down, get into the, get into the groove, downshift. It's just that going in first gear... I need to really look into why that's just so groggy. Because look at the amount that you should have a lot of torque in first. And then the second, it's not very long. And third, we just pull. So if I can get it into third gear after rolling, it really has a chance to take off. Going up the hill, I do want to see by switching back into fifth. We have enough power to keep pulling up the hill with speed. No, we do not. Let's drop it back down to fourth. The gear ratio on this truck, I think, is what's really messing with it. I mean, that first gear, like I said, this is a highway geared truck. This is not a towing geared truck. If this had four tens in the rear, I guarantee you 
I'd be able to do a lot better on this with the 7.3, but we don't. This is a highway geared truck, so in that case, we lose uh, torque and leverage for the sake of top end speed. When they make the jokes that you're redlining at 85 or 75 with a truck like this, because it has towing gears in it and a big block engine. It's not necessarily meant to be going fast. It's just meant to pull things. And with pedal to the metal, I I don't think we're gonna be able to beat the Chevy. Unless we can get to the uh, the stopping point within the next 10 set within the next 20 seconds, I'm trying to look at the clock while also trying to make sure we do this right, because I don't want to slam into anything. But we have to beat a time of 5.16.53 to beat the Chevy. With the Ford rolling in, it is going to be a time of 5 minutes, 24 seconds. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good milestone, but the Chevy had the benchmark to beat. Now, because the results are going to pretty much not change if I were to round the numbers down, going to our scoreboard, we have Chevy leading off the top at 5 minutes and 17 seconds as an average finish time. 5 minutes, 25 seconds going to the Ford, leading in second. And the Dodge pulling up the rear at 6 minutes and 57 seconds. We're going to add these two times together between this race and the next race to get our final results on the races. However, we can do our first of the three results, the brake test. On the brake test, the Chevy by far has a 1. Now the reasoning for that is I really had to use the engine brake on this truck with the gearing. The brakes on this truck are just not good. It's probably worn pads, probably worn drums in the rear, but I just do not care for the brake system on this truck. It gets a one out of four. It just, it didn't like it. I really, really did not like that. Now the best brakes I'm going to give to the Dodge with a score of four because I felt the most safe in the truck, even though it didn't perform power wise stopping power and stability was by far one of the best it didn't do anything it just it did what it was supposed to and it really held through it's like the little engine that could or the tortoise and the hare sometimes slower and steady does win the race and coming up right in the middle of the pack on the brake test is going to be the Ford. I'm going to give it a three just because of the stability of the truck. The stability of this truck does not seem to have it there. And you guys obviously saw that. If you turn the wheel ever so slightly, the trailer would offset the weight of the truck. Not enough to make it lose traction. Not enough to make you feel like you're completely out of control. But the stability of the truck just wasn't there. Now, speaking of stability, that moves us on to the stability challenge, and let's see who scored the highest. Getting the top spot is going to be actually the Chevy, just because of this fact. Even though the trailer probably rode better on the Dodge, the Dodge had more tongue being pushed down and the trailer sat lower, it didn't feel nearly as secure as it was on the Chevy. You felt like you were riding better, you didn't move very much, and I think it also probably has to do just with the gearing. I had four gears versus five, so I had to use a lot of higher RPMs in the Dodge compared to the Chevy where I could ride a little bit lower and I could see, I could hear, I could do things better. That means going to the Dodge, it's going to get second place at a score of three because it, like I just explained everything, it did well, it just it doesn't perform nearly as well and the trailer sat lower. Getting a one out of this is going to be the Ford. I'm sorry, but that truck was unstable as can be. Even though it was able to push, drive, and get places just fine, it just was all over the road, and I would much rather have been sitting in the Chevy than if at least the Dodge. Like, it would have taken a bit longer, but I could have gotten there a lot more stably and secured without the white knuckles on the steering wheel. Our last segment before we go to our speed test, I want to go over the squat test. Now... This trailer might weigh more than the accumulated 25,000 pounds that I said it was just because it's farm sim, the weights aren't exact. But the squat test, we're going to have to give the Dodge actually one. By looking at the drop from the bottom of the fender to the top of the tire, the Dodge, I believe by the looks of it, had the smallest amount of squat, giving the Dodge the four. Moving on, I would have to say probably the Ford scoring at a two. Just for the sake that, again, it comes down to the stability factor. It didn't really drop that much, but the amount of play that was sitting there, I just didn't care for the amount of how much moving around there was happening in this truck. 
Moving on to the Chevy, though, I'm going to give the Chevy the same score of a 2. It's kind of the same reasoning, but it had stability on its side, but the squat was the worst out of all of them. So now that we have our results there, we'll tally up our points here, as you guys can see. By surprise, even though it was the slowest, being on the stability side of things, the Dodge leads us right now at 12 points. The Ford is at the bottom with 8, and the Chevy is right in the middle of the pack at 10. Each vehicle can score the same amount of points by the terms of the 1 to 4 scale, but sometimes slow and steady does win the race. With both of those systems swapped out now, where we have our fifth wheel brackets in the bed, let's grab our fifth wheel and we'll hook up the Dodge first because it has the advantage of being at the bottom. So he gets first run at the entire loop around the map. But now that we have our stuff loaded up here, as stated, we are going to go the entirety of this square. So basically we're going one square mile and we're going to see who has the fastest time. So let's get our timer on here. Give it a little bit of a rev and drop it into gear. And the Dodge is off to the races. And right away, we already are able to see that this is a heavy load. It also doesn't help that this is a lot longer of a load. This is a 47 foot trailer. Now, I kind of feel bad because the actual curb weight, a lot of these vehicles and the trailer itself when people make them in farm sim, not all of them are like they weigh the exact amount that they should as the vehicle actually weighed. So some of these results are going to kind of be a little bit saddening because like this, this vehicle should be able to tow this just fine. But it's like the trailer actually is heavier than the bale trailer. So we're going to keep trying to put along here in the Dodge. We're already two minutes in and it's taking its toll on this truck and finally coming up on a very very i already know the train went by yep on a very long finish 12 minutes and 23 seconds to do one full lap around the map in the dodge I'm not going to lie, I was kind of disappointed by that. But nonetheless, we're going to get the Ford hooked up. We're going to give everybody a chance. And we're going to see what we can do. I guess the term no replacement for displacement is as true as it's going to get. But yeah, as you guys can see, like the tires aren't sticking into the ground on this truck. So I guarantee you we're going to have a lot better luck. But look at the amount of distance between the hitch and that top bar is. This stability test would be absolutely atrocious if we ran it off of this. So now the stage is set. Three, two, one. Let's go. <clears throat> now this one compared to the Chevy takes a minute to get going. The Chevy has by far the best low gear out of all the trucks. But once the Ford gets to second, third, and fourth, it just pulls like there's nothing behind it. I just don't want to know what this... Yeah, the stability of this truck is just not there. And the brakes! Where's the brakes? Okay. Brake test does not go well for the Ford. I'm gonna have to use all the engine braking in the world because stability and no anti-lock brakes now are really not gonna help this truck's results. We are, however, completely smoking the Dodge at this point in time I think when we got here we are already at like what three four minutes just to get to this point so the Ford definitely is going to outshine the Dodge but it's going to really come down to the stability of the Chevy I'm putting my money on the Chevy so far it's been the most balanced vehicle that we have going out on this but this Ford is really really quick and once I get it up to about 60 miles an hour because I already know it's going to beat the Dodge I kind of want to keep it there because the stability of this truck just really I don't like it I am going all over the road and I really don't like to badmouth Ford because I am a Ford guy I know the stability of the Chevy is going to be better but the braking is going to be by far better than the Ford and if this is the the Ford's braking I caramba I don't want to know what the Chevy's is I wish saying that the brakes on this truck were bad was an understatement but this just terrifies me now to do the 
to do the Chevy because I, I physically am like, anytime I even try to brake anymore, like there is no brakes. Trailer brakes apparently don't do anything in this truck. We'll gear down here and our time is going to be exactly 58 minutes and fifth, five minutes and 58 seconds. Not a bad time, but oh, the stability of this truck is it's sketching me out. I think that's probably half the reason why this truck is so scary to drive and the brakes are bad. The stability of the truck just isn't there. All right, on your mark, get set, go. Oh, right off the bat, you can already tell there is a difference in the torque on these vehicles. The Chevy's already in third gear doing 30 miles an hour, and I don't want to say this is a clear cut, but like I said, I'm terrified of what the brakes are going to be on this truck because I have not used those yet. But that doesn't mean that this truck might not be able to pull off the win. But you see what I mean by just feel, look at the stability of this. Like I'm, I'm shaking it back and forth and the trailer looks like it has more play in it now than it did before. So let's just keep on keeping on. See, it's 70 miles an hour. Like I understand I'm going faster on that, but I physically can. Like I just, I'm able to play with the wheel more. I don't feel nearly as out of control of the trailer. Now, I'll have to see whether or not a little setback I had affects me, but I guess there was a problem with the straps on the trailer. It just threw me sideways out of nowhere. We're going to try and take this corner without going way too far to the left. This is why I was saying the brakes are not going to be good. But I hope it doesn't kick me sideways again, because for some odd reason, this trailer is like really unstable now. Let's just keep rolling. But so far, we're looking at about 3 minutes and 17 seconds. But I think we're looking pretty good to beat the, the Ford here if we can hold out. Kind of try and keep the stability going. The fifth wheel in the back of this is really loose. And it's not helping the trailer's case back there. I know this truck can go faster, but it's like, again, the stability and the security of the truck staying upright is jeopardized if I do that. So we're still at a race against the clock. I think I can pull it off, but I'm really going to have to be careful. Remember, we're trying to beat 558 and it's 416. I think we can do it even if we had the truck tip over. But again, I think that was just a strap issue because I looked at it, restrapped the vehicles and I haven't had a problem since, but I have to be really careful. I got 10 seconds here. 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8. I don't even necessarily know what the clock's looking at because I'm not paying attention. Oh, come on, baby! It's not going to do it. <laughs> and 6.08. And going into the ditch. Hold on. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. But that leads us with our final results of the times. The Ford came in first place with a time of 5 minutes and 58 seconds. Followed by the Chevy pulling in a time of 6 minutes and 8 seconds. And finally the Dodge at 12 minutes and 23 seconds. And now that we finally have everything put back together, I'd like to note that after tallying all of our points, we currently have all three trucks tied at 14 points a pop. I did not intend this, but we have one last challenge that is going to determine this winner and will give us a 1-2-3 place finish. We're going to bring these trucks quickly over to the fuel station, top them all off with diesel. The, I, the idea behind this is simple. The truck that took the least amount of money to fill back up after our challenge will win the most points. So let's get our keisters over to the fuel station and let's get ourselves a winner. Now that we have all of our trucks lined up down here at the gas station, we're going to be filling up the tanks with diesel. And this should be the great equalizer as this is about the only chance that the Dodge is going to have to win the competition. And the Chevy is going to set the benchmark here. Let's see how well it does. It doesn't look like there's much in there. And the Chevy takes $3 to top off the rest of the tank. 
I can't necessarily get the exact fuel usage that came out of that uh, just because Farm Sim doesn't show us how much fuel was actually used, but $3 to top off the rest of our Chevy's tank. Let's move up to the Dodge. Now, as I mentioned, I do kind of feel really bad for anybody who is the Dodge fan in this video. The Cummins itself, it's just, it's a modding thing. The truck itself actually isn't bad. This truck in real life obviously is not bad. These trucks were literally the one of the best motors to ever roll out of Detroit, being the Cummins, but $2 for the Dodge. So that puts the Dodge at the front of the pack right now. We got to hope for those Ford boys that it only takes a dollar because if that's the case, Ford wins the competition. If it's any more than that, Ford ends up taking the bottom of the pile. Even with that big stretch on the race, we have to keep everything simple. We had a five scoring system and this is our last one and that's a pretty far down fuel gauge. So will the Ford be able to pull it off? And $18 later, this diesel guzzling Ford sadly takes the rear. So let's head back up to our shop and we're going to go over the whole results and king, uh, crown the king. And the results are in. After finally tabbing through all the challenges, finally tacking down all of the numbers to get each and every individual score, our crown is going to be given to the Ram. I know that seems a little odd because the truck performed the absolute worst out of all three when it came to the tests. Four out of the five, this Ram scored absolutely stupendously. It is also noted that in real life, the Rams themselves with those 12 valve Cummins, it's got 400 pound feet of torque, people. Like that's, that's good numbers. That's the most torque out of any of the vehicles we have sitting here, but also it's the newest vehicle we have sitting here. The biggest surprise in the entire field that I think we had was the Chevy. The 6.2 diesel, while not the most, it's not the greatest engine out there. It definitely performed probably the best on our course today. And sadly, the king of the diesels themselves, the IDI, it did really well, but stability just really flawed this truck. Our first place award, like I said, goes to the Dodge with 17 total points. 16 points goes to the Chevy in second place, and Ford pulls up the rear in third. It was a very close battle. Uh, if we didn't have the fuel test, we probably wouldn't have found a winner. But it really does come down to your personal taste. So... I personally am still going to be choosing the Ford over all three of these trucks because I'm a Ford man. But I know that that twin I-beam suspension is going to be fun when I have to go get it worked on. The Chevy, I think, is going to be your best overall average with a low gearing, a really powerful just stance. I mean, it's one of the most iconic builds of a truck known to date. So I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for checking this one out. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. If you want to see more of these Missouri Special Iron Gauntlets, be sure to let me know down in the comments down below, as I'd love to actually do a few more of these and kind of get a little bit better at the presentation factor of it. But without further ado, that's going to do it for me, guys. We'll see you all in the next one. This is the Rental Man out.